welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now in this video, we'll take a look at the Baofeng UV17, a new dual band handheld transceiver for 2023. Now what's interesting is that I could not find any information on the main Baofeng website regarding this radio. So at first glance, I thought it was some kind of clone. However, on the official Baofeng website for Germany, this radio is listed and they have not scrimped on the marketing material. It all looks very nice and advertised as a UV5R upgrade. So let's talk about specifications. Well, as usual with these types of radios, you'll get a frequency coverage of 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 520, easily covering the two meter and 70 centimeter amateur bands. Unfortunately though, there appears to be no support or AM reception in the air band. Now power output is rated at five watts and then two watts when in power save mode, which is used to conserve battery life. We'll check that out later connected to a meter. The radio itself does come in three different colors, black, orange, and green, if you have a preference, but of course this has no bearing on the performance unless you like go faster stripes. However, the build quality on this UV17 is actually really good. It has a really nice solid feel and the buttons feel extra nice to press. There's a 1.7 inch color screen which shows all sorts of information such as frequency, battery charge, memory names, etc. However, it does appear to be lacking any form of decent signal level meter. It just has the little bars we normally find on mobile phones. On the left side of the radio, we find the PTT alongside a function button to activate the FM broadcast receiver and another which activates the dual flashlight, which is housed in the bottom of the radio. On the right side of the radio, there's a little rubber flap, which exposes the speaker mic connection and also doubles up as the programming port. Now, unfortunately, mine did not come with a programming cable, but when used with my multi-radio support programming cable, it all worked fine. And I'll show you that software shortly. Now, as I mentioned previously, there are two LEDs on the bottom of the radio. These are the inbuilt torch and are surprisingly good. On the top of the radio, we find the antenna socket, along with one rotary control, which is used for turning the radio on and off and also adjusting the received volume. On the rear, we find the battery, which is held in via a screw. I guess this helps keeps the seal for the IP45 rated radio, although I don't think this is actually waterproof in any way. What you will notice is another little rubber flap on the base of the battery. Now this exposes a USB-C socket to charge the battery if you don't want to use the supplied desktop charger. There's also a little LED indicator on the battery which will show you the charge state. Now this connector is also independent from the radio, which means you can USB charge one battery while using another. The supplied battery is stated to have a capacity of 800 milliamp hour at 8.4 volts. As mentioned before, the UV17 has a 1.7 inch color screen. The format of this reminds me of the MD380 DMR style radios. However, this radio is only FM. The menu system is quite easy to navigate using the front keypad. Some nice features include busy lock, which prevents users doubling or trying to transmit over each other, along with a subtone scanner, which lets you find the CTSS or DCS tone that another user may be using. A feature called Hopping RX on menu item 38 has an option for on or off, but I could not find any information on this feature listed in the manual. Now, if you know what this is, then let me know down in the comments below. The screen will either show two VFO frequencies or two memory channels. To switch between VFO and memory, you hold down the green function button on the left side of the keypad. However, I was unable to set it so that one was VFO and one was memories, so you could direct frequency dial while listening to a pre-stored memory. Slightly annoying if you want to listen to the local repeater and say monitor a calling frequency. I guess you could program simplex frequencies into the memory banks if required. As mentioned before, a two LED torch is fitted to the bottom. As you can see here, it's actually quite bright, even showing on my hand under my studio lights. So how does this radio sound on air? Let's take a listen to the transmitted audio. 
This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M Zero DQW testing audio. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio on the Bay of Fang UV seventeen. M0 DQW testing audio on the UV. So next up, we'll test the RF power output. For this, I have my outside dual band collinear antenna for 270 connected to the power meter. Now, I normally use a dummy load, but it appears I've managed to fry two dummy loads in less than a week. If anyone's got one knocking around, feel free to send it. Now, power output on two meters at 145.4 megahertz sees around four watts while up on 70 centimeter at 435 megahertz, we see an output of around three watts. Now the same output power of just over three watts is also observed at 446 megahertz, i.e. the UK PMR band. Now hooking up my tiny SA to the computer and then performing a scan between 100 and 500 megahertz and then transmitting on 145 megahertz, we can see that the output is fairly clean with only one small harmonic above, perfectly within standard levels. Now on 70 centimeter at 435 megahertz with a span of 400 to one gigahertz, we can see an even cleaner signal with no major spurious emissions. So well done Bayafang or whoever made this radio, it seems quite clean to me. Lastly, let me show you the programming software. Now, as mentioned before, this radio didn't come with a programming cable, so I use my own multi-radio support programming cable. Now, I'll leave a link down below if you want to get yourself one, as they're very useful and handy to have around the shack. Now, it took me quite some time to find some programming software that worked, but managed to find a CPS titled P15UV. Now, what is a little strange is that the marketing information and pictures show some kind of zone on the screen. I could not find that within the software or even in the radio settings. I've also seen reference to a UV17 Pro on the internet, so maybe it's only the Pro version which has those features. However, once working, it worked well, allowing me to change the radio settings and upload a couple of repeater memories. Well, there we go, guys. That's a Bayerfeng UV17 radio. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. I think it's actually a really good radio and for the price, I would not grumble at buying one of these as my first ever handheld radio or even first amateur radio for VHF and UHF. I think it's definitely a step up from the UV5R in terms of build quality and features and the screen looks really nice too. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.